If you have a new iPhone 16 or 16 Pro, you've probably spent some time playing around with the camera control button. You've also probably spent some time looking at cases for that new phone. And what we've noticed is that most cases have a small cutout for that button, or have opted for a not so small cutout. That new button is capacitive, which means it detects swipes, which you do a lot of when using the camera control button. You can also press it to launch the camera. And in my experience, having a cutout like this case from Banks doesn't make that the easiest thing to do. And opting for a larger cutout like this case from Andar means that part of your screen is actually exposed. Now, of course, Apple has made their cases with a capacitive button, meaning that your case has that familiar shape and you get to swipe that button like it's the real thing. The good news is that there are a couple brands out there selling cases with a capacitive button. So in this video, I'm gonna show you every case currently available that has a working camera button. Still with me? Here we go. First up, let's take a look at the clear case from Apple. It fits pretty well, with the exception of the bottom here, where the case can kind of slip around. All of the buttons that aren't camera control are actually pretty stiff, and I'm not a super big fan of them. You of course do get good lip protection for your screen. On the Apple Clear case, the camera control button is always white. And like you would expect from Apple, it functions exactly how the button would if you didn't have a case on there. Looking at the back again here, it's actually pretty interesting that the flash is underneath the case. I'm not really sure how I feel about that one. All three of the cases I'm showing you from Apple are $50. So if I had to pick one of them, I would probably lean towards this one because it's the easiest to get in and out of my pocket. Now let's take a look at the other Apple case. So this is the Apple silicone case and man, do I have some feelings about this one. One part of me really wants to love it and the other part of me just cannot come to terms with it. And most of that comes down to just how much lint and dirt silicone cases pick up. With the silicone case, you get a color match camera control button. You get good lip protection. This is with a screen protector and you also get good coverage for your camera on the back. And of course, goes without saying that this button functions as expected. If I could get over the fact that this pulls my pockets inside out and collects lint like crazy, this would probably be one of my top choices. This is the new Beats case. And if you weren't aware, Apple owns Beats. So this is essentially just another Apple case. The inside of the Beats cases are lined with microfiber. And that's basically about all they're lined with. My first impressions of this case at the store were that it's kind of cheap feeling. Like, take a listen to this. That doesn't exactly leave me with the most confidence just placing my phone down. On the plus side, this case has the best buttons of the three that I've shown you so far. I didn't actually take a look at the camera control on the other cases in store, so they might all have black buttons, but they might also be different colors. The bottom of the Beats case is similar to the Apple Clear case, where it's totally open. And I have had this case shift off of the phone, just pulling out of my pocket. I can't speak to how this case would look long term, though I imagine this kind of material would probably end up getting a bit scratched down here along the bottom. Like you'd expect good lip protection over here, as well as protection for your camera lenses. Okay, let's move on to a case that's not made by Apple, but is sold at the Apple store. And spoiler alert, it's the worst of these four. This is the Lumen case from OtterBox. And you've probably already noticed that it's scratched on the inside from me putting my phone in and out of the case a few times. And if you look closely at this case, you'll start to notice certain spots where the craftsmanship is just not the greatest. Keep in mind that this is a $50 case. Now let's get the phone in the case. Once it's on the phone, it's not the worst looking case, though I'm personally just not a fan of the sparkles around the MagSafe ring. All of the buttons on this case feel really good. And assuming that there's some sort of partnership with Apple to get this button on the case, it's definitely working how it should. Protection for your screen is there and good, as well as clearance for your cameras. The cutouts on the bottom are pretty decent, but you might be able to see that this hole is actually just a little to the left of where it should be. And similar to the Apple Clear case, the flash is being covered over here instead of some cases I've seen where it actually cuts out around the flash. You might think I'm being a little hard on this case, but keep in mind that it's $50, so my expectations are kind of on the higher side. So now let's take a look at two cases that don't cost $50 and see how they stack up against these. So first up, we're gonna take a look at the Unicorn Beetle by Sub case. So this is the Unicorn Beetle by Sub case, and it's a pretty unique looking case. Definitely not for everybody, but it's a design that I don't mind. Let's just get straight to it and get the phone in the case. All right, so this is what it looks like fully installed. It does come in around eight or more different colors, which I'll link down below in the description if you'd like to check them out. On the bottom left of the case is a lanyard loop, if that's your jam. And then taking a look at the buttons, you have a textured action button and smooth volume up and down. All three of the buttons are super clicky and responsive. Something I'm sure you've noticed is that the sides, top and bottom of this case are all flattened, which does make it pretty comfortable to hold. This is a more protective style case, so you get good lip protection for your screen, as well as plenty of coverage for your camera lenses. Now here's what you really came to see. This is the camera control on the Unicorn Beetle by Subcase, and I can confirm that it does have a texture to it. It kind of feels how it looks. What's unique about the buttons on this case, as well as the camera control, 
is that it's slightly raised, which is different than all the other cases that we've taken a look at today. Testing it out, it functions well and only feels maybe the slightest bit different than how the Apple cases feel. But it's working properly and detecting all my swipes, single clicks and double clicks. And here's a look at the bottom. The cutouts for the speaker and the mic are an equal size, which might bother some people. And then the charging port cutout is nice and big. And in my experience, this should fit a large variety of cables. So again, this is the Unicorn Beetle by Subcase. It sells for just under 20 bucks and I'll link it down below so you can grab it. And for the finale, the Speakin Ultra Hybrid T. This is a nice clear case with coverage along the bottom for your phone. On this case, the camera control button is white, which is similar to the Apple Clear case. Here's your first full look at the Speakin Ultra Hybrid T on the phone. If you've used a Speakin Ultra Hybrid case in the past, then you're pretty familiar with how this case is. But if you haven't, let's take a tour. With a screen protector installed, this case still does give you a little bit of lip to protect your screen. And you also get good clearance for your camera lenses. On the back, each corner has a slight little lip to it, which just helps to prevent scratching on the back of your phone case. There is some subtle branding on the case, which is visible on the top and the side of the case. Here's a look at each of the buttons, which are nice and easy to press. A quick look at the bottom with good cutouts for the mic, speaker, and charging port. And here's a look at the right side, which has a good clickable power button, a spot for your lantern here, and that camera control button. Let's test it out. For me, this is functioning perfectly. It's responding to swipes, single clicks, and double clicks. Right now, the Ultra Hybrid T from Spigen sells for around $25, which is a good deal. If I had to choose one case out of all the ones I've looked at today, I would go for the Spigen one first. Thanks for spending time with me, taking a look at all the different cases that offer a capacitive camera control button. Links will be in the description. Thanks for watching.